Hey, horror shorties. This sponsor is brought to you by the Netflix of Horror. Shudder is a streaming service with the best selection of horror movies, horror series, thrillers, and more that you won't find anywhere else. A Shudder subscription gives you access to critically acclaimed films, cult classics, and uncut commercial-free shows on all of your favorite devices. Stream from your PC, iPhone, Android, Roku, Fire Stick, you name it. With our code Horror Shorts, you can try Shudder for 30 days free. Shudder is always releasing new content. A variety of new titles include Vicious Fun, Candisha, Unquiet Grave, and more. Vicious Fun is about a film critic who finds himself unwittingly trapped in a self-help group for serial killers, featuring Anchorman's David Koechner and Julian Richings from Anything for Jackson. While you're at it, also check out Candisha to see a trio of teen girls accidentally invoke a vengeful demon. I've always loved horror series and I've been waiting for a service like this. Shudder is literally my go-to for all horror. With new edge of your seat thrillers and shocking new movies added every week, you will always have something scary to watch. My favorite part about Shudder would have to be their selection of classic horror movies. Nostalgic films such as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Amityville Horror, Insidious, and many more are readily available with just a few clicks. You can stream all of this for a small payment of $5.99 a month or one payment of $56.99 a year. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like The Dark and the Wicked, PG Psycho Gorman, The Mortuary Collections, plus all the best horror documentaries, and the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. Try Shudder for 30 days free with our promo code HORRORSHORTS so you can enjoy your favorite titles worry-free for an entire month. Visit S-H-U-D-D-E-R dot com now. It was late spring around the mid-2000s when I was working at a local pizza hut not too far from where I resided. I worked pretty late as we were open till 12 a.m. in the morning when it was time to clock out. I usually had about several deliveries a day and would get past the double digit mark when it was closer to the weekend as it tended to be busier than weekdays. It was currently a Saturday, so a lot of our employees were overwhelmed by the endless amount of orders being made, to say the least. I recall the day being extremely busy, as I was pushed to the brink from the amount of deliveries I had completed throughout my shift. Most of our customers who rang in would usually order the standard extra-large pepperoni pizza with dip and a drink. But on this night, that was all about to change. The time was roughly around a quarter past 11.30. My shift was just about to end. I remember hanging by the area where my fellow employees were making pizzas as I nonchalantly gazed towards the front counter hoping that no one would call in for a last minute pizza delivery. Please, please, please nobody call. I just want to go home and relax. Just a couple more minutes to 12. Come on, come on, please don't ring. And as fate would have it, the phone rang. It was almost as if the thought of the telephone ringing manifested itself into reality. I recall my boss shouting at me to answer the phone as I casually walked towards the front counter, while silently pouting on how this customer was the sole reason why I had to work overtime this night. That's weird, it's a private number. This was before Pizza Hut took action on not accepting unknown numbers to our company directory due to the heavy volume of prank orders being made. Hey boss, the number's private. Should I answer it or no? Boy, you wanna make money or not? Uh... Answer it, damn it! I pick up the phone and said, Hello, Pizza Hut here, may I take your order? I remember hearing loud music playing in the background as the customer shouts, Hey, let me get five extra large pepperoni pizzas with mushrooms, please. Great choice, sir. You're throwing a big party, aren't you? 
Yes, yes, just throwing a high school reunion party, so there's a lot of guests to feed, you know? Of course, your address please? That's when the customer discloses his address and payment details while I began dialing in his order through our system. The customer's location was approximately a 15 minute drive, so I figured getting there wasn't going to be too much of a hassle. I then said, all right, sir, your delivery should be there in about 45 minutes or so. Hey, please don't be late. My guests haven't eaten anything for the party yet. Will do, sir. See you- And whatever you do, don't forget the mushrooms. The man abruptly hangs up as I make my way towards the seating area for the pizzas to be made. Usually with last minute deliveries like this, I would dread the drive, but if I'm being honest, I was pretty excited at the thought of meeting some potential girls at this party. About 15 minutes later, I ended up grabbing the five boxes of pizza and shoving them on the passenger seat of my vehicle. I recall my GPS taking me through some back roads where there weren't any houses, nothing but trees and forest preserve engulfing the whereabouts of my vehicle. I eventually start to approach the gentleman's residence as I see a secluded house in the middle of nowhere. I remember seeing silhouettes of people standing behind the window curtains as the bright shining party lights illuminated the household. I then parked my car in the driveway, grabbed the boxes of pizza, and began walking towards the porch. That's when I saw the front door slowly begin to open with a man standing behind it. The man looked like he was relatively around my age except he looked shallow and timid almost like he had been on a drinking binge or was really depressed about something. Are you the pizza guy? Yes, sir. Where would you like me to put these pizzas? You didn't forget the mushrooms, right? <laughs> of course not. Come inside and put it on the living room table if you don't mind. I was honestly a little hesitant going inside, but I didn't pay too much mind to it as I knew I could potentially meet some really cool people at this party. As I approach the foyer and glance towards the direction of the living room, I see about a hundred mannequins standing there. That's when the man slams the front door behind me and says, please put the pizzas down and say hi to my guests. Whether the man was playing a prank or not, I couldn't hide the fact that I was shaken up so I began to stutter. Uh, <laughs> hey everyone. Hey, you hear that? They all want you to join us for the pizza party. I'm sorry, sir, but I unfortunately have to. I then felt my heart completely submerge into my stomach. I saw the man raise his shirt up and reveal a handgun tucked inside his pants. The man then yelled, Grab one of those pizzas and feed it to Gerald. Now! Sir, please, I- I said now! Okay, okay, who's Gerald? He then pointed to the group of mannequins as I opened one of the pizza boxes to grab a slice. I then approached one of the mannequins and slowly raised the pizza towards its face. I then began to awkwardly smear the pizza on the mannequin's face. The pepperoni and mushroom toppings of the pizza began dropping all over the ground. That's when the man slowly raises his handgun and points it in my direction. I instinctively crouch down as the man shoots the mannequin point blank in the face. He then began to shout, That's not Gerald, that's George! Gerald is to the right of him, you idiot! Okay, okay, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know which mannequin you were referring to. Just please don't shoot me. They're not mannequins. They're people just like you and I. Can't you tell he enjoyed that pizza? Yes, I can tell, dude. Can, can you please just put the gun down? Why? The party's just getting started, old buddy, old pal. Dude, please, I'll do anything you want. Anything, huh? All right, then. I want you to lick the tomato sauce off of George's face. You want me to do what? Do it, clown! That's when I grabbed the mannequin that the man had just shot. I began to awkwardly stick my tongue out and lick the tomato sauce residue while the man said, Mmm, that's kinda hot. Tastes good, doesn't it, pretty boy? I pleaded with the man and said, Yes, now can I please just go? Sure, but only if you promise to deliver my next pizza personally. Okay, okay, I will. The man then threw about $500 worth of bills on me as I quickly collected them and ran outside his front door. As I got inside my car, I immediately locked the doors and began reversing out of the man's driveway. I then sped off and could see the man hanging by his porch from the corner of my eye. 
All I could remember from this point was how thankful I was to make it out of there alive. The next day at work, I addressed the issue with my boss. He ended up not taking any action except offering me another job besides being the pizza delivery guy. All I knew was that there was something extremely wrong with that man and that he needed to seek some kind of professional counseling. I've since stepped down from being a pizza delivery driver and have been a full-time pizza cook who occasionally answers the phone whenever orders come in. Hello, Pizza Hut here. May I take your order? Hey, let me get an extra large pepperoni pizza with one request. Don't forget the mushrooms. Back when I was job searching after finishing high school, I came across a job offer. There was a local pizza hut hiring various delivery guys at the time. I was living on my own and desperately needed the money. I chose to work the night shifts because it was effortless when driving around at night. I would deliver approximately five to six houses a day. Sometimes I even worked overtime for some extra cash. It was a Friday night and I was heading to my last delivery. The address was located on the outskirts of town. I was following the GPS because I never traveled to this part of town before. After traveling for a while, a huge bolt of lightning flashed and heavy rainfall took place. Damn it. It was becoming very difficult to drive amidst the thunderstorm, so I slowed down and waited for the rain to stop. After 15 minutes of waiting in the car, the rain finally reduced to some extent. I eventually reached the destination in some time. It was a two-story wooden house in the middle of nowhere. I took the pizza and walked towards the front porch. The house was in complete darkness, which made me a bit worried. It would be a total bummer if the owners weren't home. I rang the doorbell and waited for a while. Seeing no response, I rang the doorbell again, but still no one answered the door. Suddenly. My eyes went to the glass window on my right. I stood in front of it to peek inside. I saw nothing but complete darkness. But as my eyes started to adjust, I could see someone walking around. My eyes were fixated on the glass, when suddenly, a woman's face appeared in the window. Ah! Bloody hell! I stepped back in shock. The door creaked open, and the woman came out. Her face was looking pale, as if she was terrified. I felt extremely awkward, but before I could explain, she grabbed my hand, saying, Help me. Uh, sorry. I just came to drop your pizza. I rang the doorbell, but- There's someone inside my house. What? Yes, someone is hiding inside my house. I've called the cops, but you have to stay with me until they come. I could sense the fear in her voice. She was trembling like a timid rabbit. Okay, okay, calm down. Is he armed? I, I don't know. I, I only saw a shadow. Please, we have to find him. We can't let him escape. What if... What if... He's a murderer! The entire situation got extremely tense. I wanted to help her out, but if she was right, what would I do? I didn't have anything to defend myself against the alleged murderer. I mustered up the courage and I stepped inside the house as a woman locked the door behind me. The entire house was dark. Flashes of lightning coming from the window created a spooky ambiance. A long corridor stood in front of me. I turned the flashlight on my phone and tiptoed through the corridor. There was an uncanny silence in the house. Even though a thunderstorm was rumbling outside, I could still hear my heart pounding in my ears. At the end of the corridor stood a stairway. The woman pointed to a room upstairs and said, I saw a shadow in that room. I slowly started to go upstairs. Our heavy footsteps on the wooden stairs made a creaking sound. As I twisted the doorknob to open the door, a man sprinted from the dark corner and pushed me to the floor. I fell hard on the ground, hitting my head. Before I could make out what just happened, the man bolted down the stairs. I told you, there's an intruder. I heard him trying to open the main door, 
as soon as he realized the door was locked, his puzzled footsteps faded away. Everything became quiet again. I think we should tell the cops to hurry up. This man seems dangerous. Cops will be here any minute. I'm sure he's hiding in the basement. You go keep an eye on the basement door. I'll be right back. I pulled myself together and walked downstairs. There was a door underneath the stairs that led to the basement. I found the door half opened. I didn't want to take any chances, so I shut it in one go. Just then, the man spoke from the basement. Please let me go. I promise I won't tell anyone. Please, just let me go. The way he pleaded to get out of the house confused me completely. I mean, if this guy was a dangerous criminal, then why is he begging like that? And what was he promising not to tell anyone? I gathered the courage to go to the basement. I then saw a bony male sitting in the corner of the basement curled up in a ball. His body language told me that he was not what I thought he was. His eyes were filled with fear, as if he knew something that I didn't. Who? Who are you? I'm the pizza delivery guy. Who are you? I came looking for food. I thought the house was empty, but then- What? Are you freaking kidding me? I heaved a sigh of relief, realizing it was all a huge misunderstanding. I walked close to him and said, Man, you scared this poor woman to death. She called the cops on you. You should come with me so that- Poor woman? She can't call the cops on me. Well, she thought- If anyone is the murderer in this house, it's her. I saw her stabbing a man in the bedroom upstairs. What? My head started to throb in horror hearing his words. I never felt this petrified before. What the hell are you saying? You have to believe me. I saw her murdering that man. She's crazy. She will- The man stopped speaking all of a sudden, as I saw his face turn completely pale. Right at that moment, I heard footsteps coming down the basement. Oh my god, she's coming to kill us both. I turned back and what I saw ran a shiver down my spine. It was the same woman, except she was wearing a white gown with vibrant bloodstains. Her eyes were wide and creepy. She was smiling ear to ear with saliva drooling from her hungry mouth. She looked like a hound from hell while pointing a gun in my direction. <laughs> you forgot your tip, pizza guy. You deserve a huge tip after all. You helped me find the sneaky pig. I couldn't believe my eyes. A few moments back, she was the damsel in distress calling for help. But now she was my adversary coming at us with a gun, like some crazy psycho. I realized that I had stepped right into her trap. The 911 call was all a big lie, and no cops were coming to save us. Ma'am, you don't need to do this. Why not? It's so much fun! <laughs> it's getting better and better! She was laughing hysterically while walking closer each second. I knew she wasn't going to stop, so I had to act fast before the woman blew my brains out. I noticed the firewood piled up in the corner. She aimed the gun at the bony man who was going to pull the trigger when I picked up a log and hit her in the face. I hit her so hard that it broke her jaw, making her teeth fall out. She fainted on the floor, and finally, I called the cops. The cops arrived and arrested her. They found a dead body stabbed to death in the bedroom upstairs. It was her husband. She stabbed him so vigorously that his entrails came out. The story created a buzz in our local newspapers. It was a legend that the bony man was a homeless person who entered the house for food and shelter. He walked upstairs and witnessed the gruesome murder and was attempting to run away when the woman saw him. He chose to hide in order to save his life while the psycho woman was searching for him, till I came into the picture. To drive away any suspicion, the woman lured me into the house. She used me to find this guy and decided to finish us both to get away with her crime. I've stopped delivering pizza after this incident. 
I often wake up at night imagining this woman standing next to my bed like a crazy psycho. I don't think I will ever be able to work as a food delivery guy again. It was the summer of 2012 when I was on my way to work, just a couple of minutes shy of a quarter past noon. I worked at a local pizza hut, which was located about approximately 20 minutes by car, not too far from where I resided. I lived in the rural part of town, so making deliveries always had me attentive, as the vast majority of our customers lived in houses which were secluded in crop fields and nothing but land. I lived with a roommate who just so happened to be a former colleague of mine back when I was studying to be a car mechanic, so that made my stay here that much more bearable. I couldn't find much work within the field. The lack of jobs within the area almost had me convinced that it was virtually impossible to be employed within these parameters. This made sense, as the majority of customers I deliver pizza to look old and retired. I didn't exactly enjoy being a pizza delivery man, but this was unfortunately the only way I was going to make a steady income, especially living in the countryside where there wasn't much industrial or residential infrastructure to begin with. The majority of my shifts consisted of afternoon and night shifts, so my boss left me with the responsibility of receiving customer orders by phone. I would even go as far as to assist the other employees on the preparation of the pizzas, only when there wasn't much demand for deliveries. But that usually wasn't the case, as I was on the road frequently during the latter part of my shifts. Most of our customers wanted their pizza delivered due to the inconvenience of every home being so mildly isolated from one another, especially from the Pizza Hut that I had worked at. Every time I went out to make pizza deliveries this late at night, I would always feel the need to keep a palm-sized pocket knife in my back pocket, just to ensure my safety and that there was no potential foul play during these delivery services. Feeling paranoid was a normal thing, at least that's what I manifested in my head, as I would always feel an immense amount of danger when approaching the doorsteps of these strangers. I would always encounter odd-looking people. When I say odd, I mean very weird and bizarre-looking individuals, almost like they belonged in an asylum or a mental institution. Like I said before, most of the customers around here looked rather old, like senior citizen old. I was honestly convinced I was the only 20-year-old who resided within this part of town. Every time I dropped a pizza off, a lot of these customers would just look at me weird, like I was some kind of young and fresh meat that they could get their hands on. Again, I was in my 20s at the time that this occurred, so feeling a sense of unwelcomeness and a lack of cordiality was always a common thing. I'll never forget the time I got a call to deliver pizza to this one guy's house. The house was about a 15 minute drive from the Pizza Hut. Upon my arrival, I remembered seeing nothing but crops and trees everywhere, so it made it extremely difficult to spot a house this late at night, despite having a GPS. I remember pulling up to a driveway of a house that looked old and frail, like the house had been abandoned for years. I could recall seeing a rather large old man sitting on a rocking chair while staring directly into my eyes through the fog that masqueraded within the atmosphere. He was just sitting there in the dark as the glooming headlights of my car illuminated his whereabouts. I can recall seeing him creepily smile at me while rocking back and forth on his chair. This made the whole experience that much more unsettling, but I knew in the back of my head that I had to keep it professional and carry on with my obligated duties. I remember grabbing the extra large box of anchovy pizza from the passenger seat and making my way up to the man's porch. As I approached closer to the man, I could visibly see him giggling, almost like there was something humorous about my appearance. When I proceeded to make a step onto his porch, I made sure to have one foot on the ground, just in case I had to make a dash for it. Hi sir, the pizza will be $30. Are you going to be paying with cash or card? <laughs> You want money? Uh, yeah. Thirty dollars to be exact. Give me pizza first, then I give you money. That's when I slowly placed the box of pizza on the man's porch and began to patiently wait for a response. The man awkwardly stared at me and then pointed at the mailbox on his front lawn. He then said, Money's inside there with tip. 
<laughs> what the hell is wrong with this guy? Why would he put the money inside the mailbox? I cautiously approached the mailbox, while simultaneously keeping my eyes glued on the man as he looked more and more riled up, the closer I got to the mailbox. I could visibly see the man literally bouncing up and down from his chair, with a huge grin on his face, like something dramatic was about to happen. I eventually stood in front of the mailbox, and began to cautiously open the hinged door of the box to retrieve my money. <gasps> but. What I saw inside was one of the most terrifying things I have ever encountered in my life. There was about a dozen dead birds jammed inside the mailbox. Each bird looked as if it had been rotting for months, as a stench of rotting flesh and blood was a scent I could only describe as spoiled food, combined with human feces. Three of the birds had a $10 bill hanging from its beak, while one of the birds had a $1 bill in it. I immediately ran inside my vehicle and unhesitatingly floored it out of there, while the man laughed vigorously at the expense of the sadistic prank, completely disregarding the money he had left within that mailbox. As I made my way back inside the Pizza Hut, I ended up reporting the incident to my boss, but was unfortunately the laughing stock of the workplace, as the story came off as comical and juvenile to my fellow employees. I have since transitioned to becoming a full-time pizza cooker, as the thought of potentially delivering another pizza to that man still terrifies me just thinking about it. Hello, Pizza Hut here. May I take your order? Hey, let me get an extra-large pepperoni pizza with one request. Don't forget the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> 